days, very auspicious day, Mohini Ekadashi. We are observing as per the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give up all sinful activities, all enjoyments, and with all good qualities to reside near Krishna through service and fasting from uh, grains and this. And there are some items there they are allowed to take fruits, roots, milk and these things which will not break fast, especially in Kali Yuga. It is uh, very rare that someone can do full fasting and uh, not being his mind is not disturbed and diverted from his bhajan because of that. Some are there, but generally it is, Gurudev said, it is better to take Onukalpa Prasad, that which will not break fast, and in meager quantity, so that you are healthy and mind is peaceful, and you can do Shravan Kirtan and other services normally. So, fasting should not be in such a way that it will disturb your budget. And in that case, it is better to eat and do Murshram Kirtan. And we are hearing Srimad Bhagavad Gita. We heard Krishna is explaining to Arjun why it is important for him to fight as a matter of duty and without being attached to the fruit. And another reason he gave yesterday, we heard, if you will not do your duty and you because you are a great man in society people are respecting you and they hold you in high esteem then they will also not do their duties so you will be the cause of that also so krishna said although i have no necessity for any work because I don't, I need not attain anything. But still I do karma. That according to Vedic injunctions, Varna Ashram, I do. Because common people, they will follow what great man does. So he said, if I will not do work, then others will not do. And I will be the cause of ruining the society. Everything will go down. So for this reason also, Arjuna, you have to do your duty. It is in relation to others also that uh, you will be bad example and that will cause harm to them and society. So we heard Krishna was saying, if I desist from action, the world will go to wreck and ruin owing to non-performance by men of their ordained duties. And if a rupture is created in the regulated social religious life by me, means disturbance, uh, it will strike at the root of pure and ordered growth of the world by causing caste confusion and in the long run the destruction of all living beings on earth. In this relation we also heard how Srila Shanta Maharaj said, no, you have to serve as a charge because if you will not, then math will be ruined, he said. And our Gurudev also repeated the same thing to Srila Bhutan Maharaj. No, you have to do your seva given to your Gurudev. Otherwise, the problem will be there. So, uh, we have to do our service, our duty. And that will automatically inspire also others to do their 
own duty and everything will go nicely. Then next verse. Sakta karmanya vidvang so Sakta karmanya vidvam so Jata kurvanti bharata Kuryat vidvam stata saktash Chikir shuloka sangraham O Arjuna, just as the ignorant act with attachment for their work, so also the wise should act without attachment with a view to do good to the world. Explanation, O Bharata, just as the ignorant do their work with attachment for it, even so the wise should perform action without any attachment for the sake of the well-being of the world at large. The difference between the respective duties of the ignorant and the wise lies not in their mode of action, but in their attachment for or detachment from those duties. Like I said yesterday also, one who is in Raga platform, he will, if he's ordered to preach, to be example, he will also do by the other rules and regulations, to be example, but his following of Vaidhi will be of different quality, Gurudev said. They will all also do all those things, but with great love, and they will be example for others. But those who are not ordered to preach, like Bhangshidas Babaji, then they will do in their own rag, everything. So outwardly, one who is on Raga platform, pure devotee, he will do, he will go to Arati, he will attend Harikata, he will uh, chant Harinam, all this he will do and follow Ekadashi. But his attachment to Krishna is very much. Here we see one will do with attachment for material fruits and one will do with detachment. But in Vaidhi and Raga, both will do outwardly the same thing. But Raga devotee will do with a great attachment to Krishna. This attachment is not bad. It is best. It is very good. The more you are attached to Krishna, better. Nabudi bhedam janayet agyanam karma sanginam joshayet sarva karmani vidvan yukta samacharan. The wise man should not disturb the conception of the ignorant attached to fruitive actions but engage them in work, himself acting without any attachment. He who does not know the truth that Nishkama Karma, that is consecrated action, means for the satisfaction of Vishnu, aims at Jnana, that is pure knowledge which ultimately leads to bhakti, pure devotion, is an ignoramus or dance, fool. There are, these are some old English uh, words, even in dictionary it is difficult to find, but I can guess ignoramus or dance means one who does not know that Pres following prescribed duties, that is Nishkama Karma Yoga, that will purify one's heart. When heart is purified, then one will be eligible for Gyan, to understand what is non-eternal, what is eternal. 
And when one will develop in eternal knowledge, then he will submit to Krishna and will do pure devotion to him. So karma leads to jnana, jnana to bhakti. One who does not know this is ignorant. Or dance, or I don't know how it is pronounced. D-U-N-C-E. And he who performs his actions with an attachment for fruits is called a fruit seeker. Such ignorant persons show no eagerness for nil, real knowledge that awakens pure devotion even when it is explained to them. Even if you explain, but they cannot catch because lack of Sukriti. The wise men, therefore, will do well to teach them how to perform nishkama karma, desireless action, in order to purify their hearts, himself setting an example before them by his own conduct, instead of instructing them at the outset about the futility of fruitive action. Premature attempt to make them understand the distinction between karma and the jnana will do them no good. This is very important because according to eligibility, one has to practice. Because like child, he's trying to walk or in the school, you have to learn something and then you can go further like this. There are many steps. So this is, here it is described gradual procedure. There is another also direct procedure that is it by Sadhu Sangha and Sukriti one will immediately start devotion. That is also possible, but here it is this case. So Krishna says in 11th Canto, one who wants material things, he is eligible to do karma. And one who understood about non eternality of this, then he is eligible for jnana and like this. So if you will say to someone who is eligible for karma, no, this is all useless. It is all non-eternal, nothing. Then that will confuse his mind and he cannot grasp what is jnana, so he will be nowhere. So those who are jnanis, wise men, they will also do action without attachment just to be example for those because it is necessary for them. Like Mahaprabhu had drew a pralachari hundred times for us that he is an example. And we saw Prahlad Maharaj doing shrad ceremony for the sake of other people that they will follow that. But there was no necessity for him. Yes, this is intended for the preachers of Jnana and not for those of the Bhakti cult. Because Bhakti or loving devotion to me, the Absolute Person, is independent of Karma and Jnana and does not wait for the purification of the heart, which automatically follows devotional practices. But one qualification one needs past Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti, he accumulated knowingly or unknowingly, he came in contact with some devotional acts which pleases Krishna. Then by getting Sadhu Sangha, he will directly start Shravan Kirtan Bhakti from wherever he is. Like that hunter. No need of those practices. By doing bhakti, he will also purify his heart of all other desires and will get all knowledge, everything he will get, only through bhakti. But this is the condition, Sukriti, or in some cases, by some special mercy, like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, or some powerful sadhu, they can also create that Sukriti for them. So when some like special preaching, 
is inaugurated by some empowered preacher, then uh, that also will make impact and they will be inclined to serve Krishna. But usually it happens then when such pure devotee, such empowered, he disappears, then there is then some also they cannot hold on to practice because they were there due to influence of that association. But still, how much they did in that association, that is never lost. When further they will get chance, they will continue from where they stopped at that time. So for preachers of Jnana is this, they should not disturb the those. They will do, but with different mood. Prakrite kriya manani gunaih karmani sarvashaha ahankara vi mudhatma kartaham itimanyate. Works are fully affected by the qualities of Maya. But a person bewildered by false egoism imagines himself as the sole performer. Explanation. Now, let me tell you about the different characteristics of the ignorant and the wise. A means first characteristics of the ignorant. A jiva enthralled by Maya Prakriti the deluding potency of the Supreme Lord, wrongly identifies himself with his perverted ego and imagines himself as the sole agent of all his actions, good or bad. But it is a pity that he does not know that the actions are the works of Maya Prakriti and are done under the influence of the three qualities of Maya. Godhead is the efficient cause of Maya Prakriti. No, God is the efficient cause. And Maya Prakriti is the material cause of all actions done by a fallen soul in this plane of the three dimensions. In the last chapter of Gita, Krishna will explain in more details, that there are five factors for every action in this world. Here, three are mentioned. Uh, one is Supreme Lord, one is Jiva and one is Maya. So, but Jiva in false ego, he thinks I'm doing everything. He does not know that he's not the only factor. Like, if someone is in excavator to build, to dig some hole, so he's sitting inside the cabin of that excavator and he's doing that and pushing buttons like this. So excavator will do that. So if this person thinks, I'm doing everything, no, He's not indirectly in touch with the earth itself. That is done by excavator. If he thinks I'm doing everything, that is not correct. With his own hand, he cannot dig that stone and that earth. He cannot dig. He's using that excavator and the excavator is in direct contact. So there are two factors there. And another factor is there if this person thinks I am independent, he's employed in that construction company. That company is the owner of this excavator and they gave him this job. Without getting that job and without getting that excavator, 
he cannot do that. Even he cannot press those buttons and do with that uh, joystick, cannot do anything. So one who is in full CEO, he thinks I'm doing everything. I'm independent, I'm doing everything, but it is not correct. Like that, Krishna will explain, there are three gunas, those five factors will come, and one is the free will of Jiva, and uh, some other there, but three are these. One is Maya, one is Jiva, and one is Krishna. Unless he gives you power, you cannot do anything. And unless he gives the fruit, that cannot be done. So, but one who is in ignorance, he thinks I'm doing everything. It is not correct. That is why Guru said no one can do anything independently of Supreme Lord. And whatever happens, happens by the will of Krishna. Nothing can happen without his approval, sanction. But that does not mean that we are like dolls. We have relative independence and we can use this material energy as instrument. But this instrument also we have no full control over it. Like this body will age will get old, that we cannot stop. Although we are, we have relative independence, but it is Krishna's desire, arrangement, creation that this material energy has certain characteristics. I can move my hand here and there according to my relative independence, but I cannot make it not grow old. So Krishna is there, Maya is there with special characteristics and Jiva's free will and also uh, what kind of conditioning you have based on previous actions, so many factors, not only I am God, I can do whatever I like, that is false ego. So this is the characteristic of ignorant. He thinks I am the sole performer. And Tattva Vittu Mahabaho Guna Karma Vibhagayo Guna Guneshu Vartanta Itimatva Nasajate. But, O oh mighty Aram Tarjuna, he who is possessed of the knowledge of the difference of the soul from the qualities of matter or action realizes that it is his senses that get engaged in their objects, so he does not become attached. Explanation Characteristics of the wise But, O oh do mighty armed, the wise who are knowers of the truth do not associate themselves with the mundane qualities and actions, knowing fully well that they are works of Maya Prakriti and are quite different from the analoid self, who is a sentient being that can take the initiative by himself. Inert matter cannot. Like that excavator cannot do work by itself. Must this sentient being, one who feels, who is conscious, he can control. But we are under the control of Krishna for getting that power. So he is fully aware of this difference. What is what? What is matter? What is soul and only conscious being can take initiative, can decide. Gurudev said no one in this world considers body to be the person. As long as conscious being is there inside, Atma, which has got thinking, feeling, willing, that will be considered as a person. Once that Atma leaves the body, no one will consider that dead body to be a person. They will bury it and you cannot get any knowledge from that person and you cannot uh, bring that dead body to, vo to vote for voting. 
if you bring one serious patient, he cannot walk, cannot do anything, but he can cast vote because he can decide, yes, I want this one, not this one. But if you bring that body, cannot <laughs> decide. So no one actually in this world considers that body to be the, even if you kill some person, they will put you to prison. But if you burn that body, no one will take you to prison. Everyone knows, but they are not uh, conscious very much of this thing. So a truly wise man thinks within himself. I am a soul, a spiritual eternal entity living in this tabernacle of flesh and blood. I shall have to quit this temporary habitation after a few days or years not known to me. But I have an eternal function of rendering loving service to the Absolute Person Shri Krishna, the only object of my worship. As ill luck would have it, I have been enveloped by the two garments, that is to say, the gross and the subtle bodies, the temporal products of Maya Prakriti. I must not wrongly identify myself with these two outward garments and must not, therefore, yield to their sensuous cravings. The Lord of my senses and sense objects is not apparent I. Uh, no, the Lord of my senses and so sense objects is not this apparent I or real I, but the Supreme Lord, Hrishikesh Gobinda. I have therefore no relation with the three qualities of my prakriti or products thereof. So I must not be enslaved by those qualities or actions, nor consider myself as the doer. So this is one who is wise, realized the soul. He is fully aware of all these things. Uh, and he is not under the control of his body and mind their cravings, he controls them by the grace of Krishna through submitting to him. Yesterday I mentioned, but today I, I uh, made that note that you know there is Svakiaras and Parakiaras, transcendental marriage relation with Krishna, transcendental and transcendental Parakya means their gopis are married to another and to increase that attachment they are having paramour relation with Krishna. So that is there. But Srila Sridhar Maharaj explained also in the relation as a Vaidhi, someone is in Vaidhi platform and has to go for Aganuga, that also I heard. But yesterday I heard this explanation also. Uh, Shidhar Maharaj speaking. As a result of our previous karma, we are bound to undergo some natural tendency. The previous samskar. You are bound. It is bound because of your past actions. Now this habit is there. But now you are bound or like addicted. Someone is addicted. That may be compared as pati or husband. Pati means rightful owner of me. My previous karma as a resultant has got some irresistible command and power over me. That is pati. That power which is, I cannot escape from that. He, that is my owner. I'm not free. He owns me. He controls me. And the present free will I have 
anyhow I must take out from it, from that karma, and offer to the Lord. That is Upapati. Krishna becomes my paramour, because that is my husband, that karma, it owns me, it controls me, everything, but I have to, uh, that is Upapati. Krishna is Upapati here in this sense. Pati is the demand of the nature of my previous karma. I'm under control, owned, cannot do anything. The demand of mind and body. That has got some power on me and they won't let me be free to go to Krishna so easily. They will try to take back, to take me back. But we are to deceive that force that internal force, and still we are to take away our freedom to the sweet feet of the Divine Master. Like gopis, they have to deceive their husbands to go to Krishna. We also have to deceive our that our conditioned nature and demands of body, mind, all this. They are having control over us, but we have to deceive them secretly, stiltly, by some cheating, we have to offer ourselves to Krishna. And he, means Krishna, is also a very clever thief. He'll also take it and digest it. Because that is our rightful owner. The husbands are owners of wives, gopis, and that karma is the rightful owner. But Krishna also likes to steal. So he will take that and digest. Ha ha. And he's smiling. And he's very fond of that. Krishna is very fond of that stolen thing. Very, very favorite to him. Krishna likes those stolen things, or these uh, gopis who are deceiving their husbands. So this is one kind of explanation, which that from Vaidhi to Raganuga, that is far for me. And what to speak of gopis deceiving their husbands to go to Krishna, that is far. But with this I can relate. I am fully in my, I am bound by my past actions to have certain tendencies. I see something, I become attracted and senses are pulling me, mind pulling me all the tendencies there. And that is my condition. But here, so that is rightful owner, husband, owner. But somehow I have to deceive that and offer myself to Krishna and Krishna will also like that. He will like to steal from the owner. So I, I uh, found it very nice that it can, I can relate to this Parakya Bhajan. That Parakya Bhajan of Gopis, that is ultimate. And another Parakya Bhajan is this, one is in Vaidhi, Vaidhi Bhakti, but internally he will always think of Krishna in that intimate, sweet, delightful relation. That is also one kind of Parakya Bhajan. For that I am not qualified and that Gopi also not. But this one at least I can try because I am owned by my body and mind, the karma, they are catching me. But I have to uh, release myself somehow or other by that meager freedom which I have to surrender to Krishna and he will take me, he will rescue me. So here Krishna is saying, those who are wise persons, they think like this. I am not, I am, I am belong to Krishna and I should not be I should not yield to their sensual cravings of body and mind. The Lord of my senses and so, and so is not this apparent eye or real eye. 
the Lord of the senses is not this body and mind, and also I am not. The master of the senses is the Supreme Lord, Hrishikesh. So, I will not go this direction to be slave of Maya, but I must uh, so I must not be enslaved by those qualities of Maya uh, or think myself the doer, but I have to submit myself for the service of Krishna. So this is also Parakya Bhajan, which we can ordinary condition souls, we can practice this Parakya Bhajan. to deceive, <laughs> uh, but that is actually not deceiving, that is right, the, the proper action to offer yourself because Krishna is our actual owner. Prakriter guna samudha sajante guna karma su tan akritsna vito mandan Persons who are deluded by the qualities of Maya become attached to the senses and their objects. The truly wise should not disturb these unfortunate ignorant persons. They will show them what is beneficial for them according to their, uh, their capacity present explanation. The ignorant who are deluded by the three qualities of Maya imagine themselves to be born of Maya and associate themselves with the qualities and actions of Maya Prakriti. These less intelligent, ill-fated persons must not be unnecessarily disturbed by the truly wise. They should be instructed to follow a gradual process leading to higher knowledge. Ignorant and deluded as they are, they must begin to learn at the outset how to adhere strictly to the principle of Svadharma, means your own duty according to socio-religious duties, laid down by the scriptures. So first they have to follow that. Just as a person possessed of a spook misidentifies himself with the evil spirit so long as he is under the influence of the bogey, so also he who is deluded by the three qualities of Maya imagines himself to be born of Maya and therefore wrongly identifies himself as the product of my qualities and actions. Just as exorcising by muttering incantations or applying specific drugs is the remedy for the victim of the hobgoblin, so also the practical application of doctrine of desireless action prescribed by the truly wise who follow the scriptures in toto to the ignorant is the only remedy to get rid of the deluding influence of my qualities and actions. So like one who is possessed by a ghost, he is fully under the influence of that ghost. Like we are now, Gurudev told, we are in, caught by Maya ghost. So we are under influence, we don't know who we are and all this, we are misidentified. But, like there is that exorcist, he will drive away that ghost by some mantras, incantations mean mantras, or some drugs, some herbs also you can give, that will remove that ghost. In the same way, following this desireless action prescribed by the Veda will uh, 
help them. So the ignorant is the only remedy to get rid of the deluding influence of my qualities and actions. That will be medicine. The truly wise should not, therefore, try to unsettle the mind of the ignorant, unacquainted with the knowledge of self and non-self. One is Atma, that is self. Another is Anatma. Gurudev used the word Anat That is in Sanskrit, Anatma, that is not self, means matter. And their respective functions, they, they have different functions. Atma and matter. But should only advise him to perform the ordained duties without seeking for fruits, like a sorcerer who administers drugs and matters incantations while curing a possessed person, instead of trying to convince him by argument that he is not a ghost, but a human being. So you cannot explain to that person who is under the influence of ghost and he's fully that influence. You cannot say you are not a ghost. Like if you go to someone, you are not your body. He cannot understand that. Impossible. You can try and you will see. But if you give him that process, then he will, through that process, he will be able to understand. So need to, no need to tell. Sometimes no need to tell, just you give medicine. That medicine will reveal everything. Like here, that sorcerer, exorcist, he will give medicine and that mantras he will chant, not explain you are not ghost. But when that ghost will leave, then he can understand, oh, I'm not a ghost. Like that, one will understand, oh, I'm not matter. True practice. That is why our Gurudev also sometimes would not explain certain things. But engage us in the practice through which we will be able to realize. Because you are not able to understand, even if he tells you. Or, and also according to submission, you can understand like this. So sometimes no, no need to explain. In some cases, it, it is better not to explain because it is waste of time and only you will confuse that person's mind. He will say, what, the, what do you, I'm not this body. What you are speaking, you are a mad person. So like that, they will do this. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Dhyatma Chetasa Nirashir Nirma Mobhutva Yudhyasva Vigata Jvara. Like sometimes you just have to give prasad. No explanation, nothing. Give prasad. Even not telling that is prasad. But that prasad will work. And gradually, <laughs> that understanding and that consciousness may arise. Hmm. Or like uh, knowingly, unknowingly means try to engage someone in some service. They will not know, but to try to engage in some service of Krishna or his devotees, that will help them. Gradually they can one day they will, uh, their consciousness will awaken and they can understand. Free from all anxieties with the mind directed towards the soul and dedicating all your actions to me, go on fighting without appropriating the results thereof and shaking off all sense of egoism. Krishna is telling explanation. Thus realizing, O Arjuna, the true knowledge of your real self, of Godhead and Maya, 
means some van de Gyan. Dedicate all your actions and their fruits to me, the Supreme Lord. Absolve yourself from all thoughts of egoism and desires for enjoying the fruits of your actions. Refrain from all anxieties and lamentations of, on the supposed loss of your friends and relatives as the after effects of war and fight the battle out as the bounden duty of a Kshatriya. Anxiety and lamentation is Pralad Maharaj, we will hear on Sunday, he said that soul who becomes attached and misidentified with matter and becomes attached to sense objects, temporary sense objects and temporary non-eternal bodily relations is always in anxiety and in disturbance because it is non-eternal, always changing. And it is by nature like that. When Jiva contacts matter, misidentifies, then fear, lamentation, anxiety, all this will come. So here Krishna says, you are thinking they are my friends, they are my relatives, and after I will kill them, then how I can enjoy this world? And I will always think I kill them like this. So Krishna said, you have to rise above this. This is ignorance. You have to realize who you are and what is your real duty and doing that duty. Uh, that will actually means you have to give up all your false ego and do that duty and that will be beneficial for you and for all others also. Now you're thinking I should not kill them, that will harm them and harm me, but it is not so. It will help you and help them because you are doing devotion to Krishna. Their real self will be benefited and you will be benefited. Then further in explanation it is there. The three features of Nishkama Karma have been clearly mentioned. Viz. Indifference to fruitive actions. Giving up all sense of egoism and dedication of all actions with the fruits thereof to me, the Supreme Lord. So one should not desire to enjoy the fruits of actions. Krishna is the only enjoyer. We can take his prasad, but we are not direct enjoyer. So Krishna is the sole enjoyer of fruits. That is one thing. Another is giving up all sense of egoism, this misidentification, and also I am the sole doer and all this, all this false egoism you have to give up and dedicate all actions with the fruits, actions and fruits, to Supreme Lord Krishna. That is three features of Nishkama Karma, proper karma without desires. So then tomorrow we will hear further what Krishna will say.